Hogwarts Legacy is the game that everybody is raving about right now, and with only three weeks till launch, it's looking to make its mark as one of the best open world action RPGs of recent times. But will the game live up to the hype? Would it be a genuine contender for Game of the Year 2023, and can it follow in the footsteps of other great games in the genre such as God of War, The Witcher, Skyrim and Elden Ring? Based on everything we know so far, we're going to delve into exactly how good this game could be. So, if you've been following along with the action and you know what to expect, let me know in the comments your predictions for how good Hogwarts is going to be, and if you're brand new to it, you can use this video as a snapshot into what you might be able to expect. Historically speaking, games within the action RPG genre look at certain criteria to hit their success. Whether it be something like The Witcher 3, which focuses so much on a good story, side quests and character development, along with pioneering graphics at the time, or something more like Elden Ring, which has a lot more to do with combat, progression and customization, these games look at doing certain things to making them into the amazing games that we now remember. So we're going to have a look at how Hogwarts Legacy so far seems to be building on these areas and what they might deliver. And from that, we're going to decide whether this game is actually going to live up to the hype. And the first area we're going to look at is the story element. Now a game like Hogwarts Legacy, which is building on the foundations of the Harry Potter Wizarding World universe, has to have such a great story, build on so much of the lore, and also have that element of fan service in it to really build into such a great game, as this is what players who are joining the series are gonna remember. Hogwarts Legacy is set in the late 1800s, so over a century before the events of the Harry Potter universe we know today. Your character, or as the developers keep mentioning, you, are going to be going into Hogwarts, the most prestigious wizarding school in the world, as a fifth year. So you will be going in as what they call a late starter. But following suit from some other games such as Skyrim, you seem to be going in as the chosen one. No, not the dragonborn, but as a wizard who is in tune with some of the ancient magic which is rifling the land. Because you are a late starter into the school, there's a lot of pressure on you to catch up, and so you'll be doing this through a variety of classes, trainings, and a bunch of exploration into the world, which will help get you ready for the inevitable story and challenges that story is going to bring. So whilst you might start off as learning spells, doing basic combat, building up some potions, eventually as you explore the world further and the story progresses, I'm going to imagine you're going to get into some really in-depth magic, some insane combos which we'll talk about in the combat stage, and really harness that ancient magic that you seem to be so in tune with. From what we know of the story so far, and I don't want to go into spoiler territory at all, but you'll be fighting off the sort of usual dark wizards and goblins who are trying to harness that ancient magic power for themselves, and your decisions will have an impact on how that goes. But like all these other big open world story based games, what really is going to make the difference is the side quests. And from everything we know, it is rifling with side quests. Whether it be optional classes to learn new spells, whether it be hidden dungeons which you can only find through exploration, or whether it be these little hamlets which show you snippets of the wizarding world that we've never seen before from unique wizards and different perspectives. There seems to be so much which builds into the story. Now I'll be honest, because we haven't heard much, I am nervous that so much detail has gone into some of these other areas like the side quests, like the visuals and like all the different exploration that I'm hoping the main story still has that meaty impact that we want which I'm hopeful for but obviously we don't have a lot of information on at the moment and probably won't until we all actually get to sink our teeth into the game properly. But what also will feed into that is the amount of lore that is developed within the game as well. Now from what we've heard of the developers, they've started with the books. They started reading the books, they read them a couple times and used that as their main source material. Then they went to the films and then they created the world. So everything they've done is in reference to the wizarding world that has been displayed by JK Rowling. The developers seem to love the wizarding world, whether it be from when they were kids and dreaming about the perfect game to now developing it here themselves. They are massive fans of the series and from everything we've seen from their interviews to their posts to their gameplay previews, they've put so much passion and love and respect to the source material into this game. They really have gone above and beyond to create this world and when you hear them talk about it, you see the pride in what they've created. So I have no doubt the lore and fan service element is going to be there for the story and that meshed with a great plotline and unique plotline they've created themselves. I'm expecting good things. But it's not enough just to have a great story. 
In an open world RPG, you also have to create an environment and a world where the player can get fully immersed within. From everything we've seen, it seems that they have focused on this as one of their main priorities. Everything you can see, you can go to. Places you've never seen before in the wizarding world, you get to explore. And if you want to do something, it seems completely possible that you can go and do it if that's what you choose. The focus they've put on this open world and exploration has been paramount to them. And that along with the stunning visuals that we've seen from the gameplay previews, seems to do a great job at building that immersive feeling. Whether it be random little side quests as you fly across the world, whether it be the way that you fly across the world, whether that be Broom, Hippogriff or Thestral, what you do within the world and the space they've created has been an absolute focus for them. And again, from everything we've seen, they seem to have done an amazing job with it. I don't think any player is gonna have a problem being fully immersed within this world and feeling like you're actually there within the grounds of Hogwarts, which they've spent so much detail giving justice to the different rooms that we know about, the corridors that connect them, and in the case of the Hufflepuff common room, creating this from scratch that we've never seen before in any of the source material. They've gone above and beyond at giving us that experience that when we're walking across the world, we do get fully immersed in it. Having a great story and an open world to explore that's immersive are fantastic qualities that you need within any big open world RPG. But this is a game, not a movie. So you also need to have really well developed combat mechanics if you wanna make that actual playing part fun as well. Now the combat section can have a whole video on its own and I will be making a video, but to give you sort of a high level about what the combat mechanics are, they seem really, really good. From having 16 usable and unique spell slots that you can use in a fight, to having an ancient magic meter which can deliver insane finishes, and then having the full customization about what spells you wanna put on your roster, from your disarming protection spells, your stealth spells, or even going full the other way into the dark arts, the combat system seems to have been very well flushed out within this game also. There seems to be a really big focus on selecting the right spells to use at the right time, making sure you hit big combos and hitting those insane finishes, which as a player who loves the combat mechanics in most of the big open world RPG games, I'm very excited about. Now, obviously we're not hacking and slashing with swords like so many of these other games, we're using spells and that requires a different level of intricacy. And with all the options available, that customization as a player is gonna matter a lot. Fights seem to be very outnumbered towards you, so I'm not sure how many one-on-one -on -one duels we're gonna get with other wizards, but it seems that we're gonna have to manage a lot of different incoming fire at one time. That's gonna require a lot of different blocking, a lot of different counter attacks, and making sure we're using our targets and using the right level of spells for those right targets all at once. I quite love the intricacy of fights like that. I think it's going to be very interesting. I do think they've delivered quite well so far on what we've seen from the combat mechanics. And as you level up those spells as well, they'll become even stronger. And that takes us on to our next area, which is really key for these games, which is progression. For some games, you're as strong at the start as you are at the end. But when we get into this open world RPG genre, that's not what we want. We want progression, not just in terms of progression of story or progression of time and seasons like this game has as well. Instead, we want progression of our abilities, and there's so much that goes into this. From what we've seen so far, we can unlock new gear, upgrade our gear, unlock new spells and upgrade those spells, as well as having a whole talent tree system which lets us customize exactly what route we want to go down to and progress within that. It seems like the leveling capabilities of this game by earning different XP from a variety of different methods are all going to matter a lot in how we sort of scale up as the game goes on. And that's what we need. From what they've said as well, you can go and explore areas which you are just not ready for and you'll get beaten to a pulp, which I love. That's what we need. I wanna get to an area and be like, oh, that guy? Yeah, I can't beat that guy yet. I'm gonna go level up first. And that's what I love so much about Elden Ring and what I'm gonna think I'm gonna love about this game. The progression element is there within this and it seems that they've focused a lot on that. Now, my one hiccup that we just don't know enough about yet because we don't know the scale of the game is I do hope that this isn't too easy to level up to the point where you're just kind of one-shotting everything and you don't really get that like hard, grueling try at the combat mechanics. I know for myself, I'm going to put it on hard difficulty from the rip, so I'm hoping to get that challenge throughout. I do just hope it's not too easy to progress in that way so that everything becomes a bit menial. That's my one unsurety at the moment, but at least we know the progression element is there. 
And that takes us on to the last part, which I think makes these games really important, and that is the customization of it. It is an RPG, a role-playing game after all. So whether you want to go in as yourself, whether you want to create your own Harry Potter a hundred years earlier, whether you want to go in as a soon-to-be Death Eater in the future, whatever your choice and playstyle is, you get to do within this game as well. And that is great. And that comes down straight from the character customizer where you can choose exactly what you look like. It's not the most in depth that we've seen from other games, but it seems to be good enough at giving you that base. Where the real customization comes in is choosing how you want to play. Do you want to play stealthy? Do you want to play all guns blazing? Do you want to play with the dark arts and see how that twists your soul and twists your fate and maybe twists the outcome of the game? Do you want to be really prepared going into a fight, making sure you're stacked up on potions and what the best spells for this different scenario might be? Or do you just want to go in and use your roster of abilities that you've got on deck and just see what you can get going? This kind of level of customization of how you want to play is key for an RPG and they seem to have really allowed the player to do that. However, we can't talk about customization without talking about the room of requirement. Now again, whole video that I can do on this and I will be doing on this, but the customization of your own space within the room of requirement, which is where you can brew potions, look and research new gear, upgrade your gear. This has all really been customizable so you get the visual experience that you want. And then when you go out to the vivarium and you get to see your beasts, you get to have that whole experience once again about having that customization about what you do with your beasts, how you look after them, how the area looks, and that will all depend on what they give you back and how you can then upgrade your gear. All of those things seem to be linked. Again, I'll go over them in another video so we get full details, but the customization is there. They've really nailed that point. So based on what we know so far, the story seems to be there built on a love of lore. The combat system is there. The open world environment is there. The progression is there. We have collectibles, we have customization. And honestly, we seem to have pretty good graphics as well. All of these things, really are looking at Hogwarts Legacy could be a fantastic contender for game of the year 2023 and may live up to all the hype that it seems to have rightly been awarded. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments below. Do you think it's going to live up to the hype that it's been building and that all the teasers and trailers have really got you excited? Are you going to be pre-ordering it? Are you getting the deluxe edition? Or are you going to wait till it comes out and make your decision then? Let me know down in the comments below and also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of the content leading up to release and all of the additional content that will be coming once it's out.